Welcome to the independent practice for Math 1.1. <clears throat> Hopefully you've had a chance to do some of these. Um, if you haven't, uh, stop the video and go ahead and do some. You could do like the first four, and this is to help you check to see how you're doing. Okay, Independent practice means that you've attempted them, you've tried them. You might not fully get it. Maybe you've asked me for help. You've asked another teacher for help. Um, or you've come here to the video, and uh, you can watch me do a couple, and um, then keep going. But uh, I want you to attempt these on your own, and uh, let's let's do them, okay? Start with number one, uh, greatest common factor. So number one, we want a greatest common factor of 8 and 14. Again, I do the 8, the smallest of the number. I do my little rainbow, 2, 4... So 8 only has those as the factors. Now I have to find the one that goes into 14. 8 does not go into 14. 4 does not go into 14. 2 does. So right away, my greatest common factor is 2. Now we have 3. Again, I just picked the smallest one, 21. Okay. I do my little factor rainbow. 1 and 21. 2? Nope. But I knew 3 times 7, that gets me 21. 4 times nothing, no. 5 times nothing, no. 6, no. And then there's 7. Okay, so I only have those 3. Now I want to see um, which one goes into all of these. 21 does not go into 24 or 27. 7 does not go into those. So 3, let's see. Oh, 3 times 8 gets me 24, and 3 times 9 gets me 27. So, I know 3 goes into all of them. 3 is my greatest common factor. Okay. Ooh, great. Number 3 has these numbers. The smallest one is 21, which we just did. 1, 21, 3, 7. Okay, now... I want to see if 21 goes into 35. Oh, no. Sure does not. Does 7 go into 35? It does. So I'm going to put a little, little mark right here. Now, does 7 go into 49? Yes. 7 times 7 is 49. 7 times 5 is 35. 7 times 3 is 21. 7 is my greatest common factor of these three numbers. Cool. Okay, number four. I have three more numbers. I'm going to take the smallest one. Twelve. Do my rainbow factor. One and twelve. Two and six. Three times four. And there's nothing in between, so those are my factors. Now I see which goes into 18. Or which goes into uh, 18 and 26. Does 12 go into 18? Nope. And if it doesn't go into one, it, you don't have to check the other one. Does 6 go into 18? Yeah, 6 times 3. Does 6 go into 26? Nope. Not a common factor. 4 go into 18? Nope. 3 go into 18? Yes. 3 times 6. Does 3 go into 26? Hmm, nope. Ooh, we're getting down there. We only have 2 and 1. 2 go into 18? Yep, 2 times 9. 2 go into 26? Yep, 2 times 13. So, the greatest common factor is not a big number. It's 2. Alright, cool. Hopefully you really understand the greatest common factor and are good with being able to solve those. Okay, so let's go to least common multiple. I'm going to move this up. We'll do 5, 6, 7, 8. Alright, so we have 5 and 6. I put the numbers down here. Five, six. I love doing um, five. So you have five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty, thirty-five, forty. We'll just go to forty. Okay, now let's do six. Six, twelve, eighteen, twenty-four, thirty. Boop, boop, boop. Nah, I don't need to go any further. 30 is common to both of them, 
So that's my least common multiple. Let's go on to six. Six and nine. I just did a bunch of sixes, so let's do that. Six, twelve, eighteen, twenty-four, thirty, thirty-six, forty-two, forty. Eight. Let's go to 48. Okay? Now let's do 9. You have 9, 18. Oopsie. I guess I went a lot of far, a lot farther than I had to in here. Because once I get to 18, this has an 18. And I know those are common. That's the least common multiple. Cool. All right, we got 3 here. We have a 6, a 12, and a 15. All right, so we have 6, 12, 18. We've done this one a bunch, 24, um, 30, and 40. Oh, not 30, 36. Oh, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's just go to 36 here. 12, 24, 36. I'm going to stop there because we have a common one. 15, 30, uh, 45. Okay. So even though 36 are common for the first two, it's not common for all three. So we got to keep going. Okay, let's go back to our 12s. 48, 60, 60. Okay, we'll stop there because then this one, I think if I add one more, I'm at 60. So now I have 60 here and 60 here. This one, will this hit 60? Um, I'm kind of thinking it will since it's a 6, 6 times 10. But let's play it out. 36, 42, 48, 54, and 60. 60 is the least common multiple. All right, cool. Now we have number 8 here. We have 3, 9, 15. And um, I'm going to do a couple here. I'm going to do 15, 30, 45. Do those out. Let's just see. Uh, I think on this one I'll start with the big ones and go out a little bit and then the smallest one. So now I have 9, 18, 27, 36, 45. Okay, so I have those are in common. I'm going to see if 45 works for 3. So 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27, 30, 33, 36, 39, 42, 45. Yippee! It did work. So once I got this common 45 here, I just played this one all the way out, and it happened to land on a 45. And so I know I have my common multiple, my least common multiple. All right. Let's have some fun with some word problems. Okay. Number nine. A gardener has 27 pansies and 36 daisies. He plants an equal number of each type of flower in each row. What's the greatest possible number of pansies in each row? So we have to have a common number. They're going to be in equal rows. So... Um, 27, uh, how can I take 27 and put those into rows? And how can I take the 36 and put them into rows? So I want to know the factors of these numbers. So this could go in one row of 27. Uh, two, no, three, three and nine could do. 
Um, we could do 4, no, 5, no, 6, no, 7, no, 8, no. Okay, so those are my possible rows. That's a 7, not a 2. So we have 27. So it could go in one row of 27. It could go in three rows of 9. Now let's do 36. One row of 36. Two rows of 18. Three rows of... 12, 4 rows of 9, and now 5, 6, 7, 8 doesn't work. Okay, so if I do a row of 36, that's not going to be the same as 27. Um, 18, I can't do 18 because there's not 18 over here. 12, no, but 9... If I have them in rows of 9, I'm going to have 4 rows of 9 daisies, four, 3 rows of 9 in pansies. So the greatest possible number of pansies in each row would be 9. Basically what I did is I found the greatest common factor of 27 and 36. Okay. Number 10. 14 boys and 21 girls will be equally divided into groups. Find the greatest number of groups that can be created if no one is left out. Again, we're looking for this greatest common factor. So 14 and 21. I'm just going to do 14, 1, 14, 2, 7. Okay. Does 14 go into 21? Nope. Does 7 go into 21? It sure does. So 7 groups. I could have seven groups. Um, it would have two boys in each group, and it would have three girls in each group. But it would be seven groups, greatest number of groups, nobody left out. Okay? Greatest common factor. All right. Hope you did well. If you have any questions, if you just don't understand something, come see me. Come see a teacher, and we'll walk through it together. Um, but if you're feeling good about this, if you did a good job, I would move on to the extra practice, and that is page 13, and I want you to do numbers 18 through 26, and when you're done with that, rip out the page and turn it in, uh, and don't forget to put your name on it, okay?